Bring back the kidnapped Hazaras. Bring back the kidnapped Hazaras. Today I'd like to talk to you about promises. Over 60 years ago, the Australian government made a promise to its citizens and to the world that it would protect those fleeing violence and persecution. This promise was made voluntarily an act of humanity and solidarity following the horrors of World War II. That promise was made by signing the Refugee Convention, a binding international commitment. This promise must not be taken lightly. Indeed, the consequences of Australia breaking its promise is almost certain death for many people. As part of that, that promise, Australia committed to not return people who are fleeing persecution around the world. However, as of late, the Australian government has been breaking its promise. It has been sending people back to Afghanistan where there is danger, torture and risk of death. The situation in Afghanistan is not safe especially for Hazaras, and the recent events like 31 kidnapped people highlights the danger of sending people back. The Taliban and other groups have vowed to wipe out the Hazaras from Afghanistan. We cannot sit by and let our government return them to danger. Security conditions in Afghanistan have not only failed, they are getting worse. The political vacuum in Afghanistan is now intrinsically dangerous for many groups of people. No one with any knowledge of the situation in Afghanistan will, could possibly come to the conclusion that it is safe to return people there. Pakistan is also unsafe for thousands of Hazaras, many who fear targeted killings, bomb attacks, death threats, and other threats on a daily basis. Both the Hazara and Pakistani governments have failed to protect Hazara people. In the last year, Australia has forcibly returned a number of Zaras back to Afghanistan, despite clear evidence of the danger. After one forced return, a Zara man faced torture and abduction at the hands of the Taliban. Another Australian citizen who returned to Afghanistan to visit his family was killed by the Taliban. These returns, the forced returns of Hazaras a clear violation of international law and a sign that Australia does not keep its promises. Our government repeatedly claims that its motivations in stopping asylum seekers by boat is to save lives. It is grossly hypocritical for the government to continue to force Hazaras to return to Afghanistan, knowing well that it could mean a death sentence. It is also hypocritical that our government will send Australian soldiers to fight the Taliban, yet we won't protect those fleeing the Taliban when they come to our shores. Australia is attempting to avoid its responsibilities by turning boats back, by detaining people in detention centres, and by changing the law to escape our responsibilities under the Refugee Convention. I'm tired of hearing our politicians say that these harsh and inhumane policies are justified as they are stopping people taking risky journeys by boat. It is an argument that the ends justify the means, even if the means are cruel, inhumane and torturous. If the government is really concerned about saving lives, it would ensure the protection of refugees worldwide, rather than simply push asylum seekers to make an even dangerous journey somewhere else. Media reports this week have revealed that the Australian government is spending $4 million on a TV show designed to deter people from coming to Australia. A TV show. This action shows that the Australian government has no idea about why refugees flee their country. A TV show is not going to convince people not to flee from persecution. A TV show is not going to stop kidnapping, persecution or death threats. A TV show is not going to stop people who are fleeing from their lives, running from the Taliban. In addition, the Australian government is spending $4 billion each year of our taxpayer money on detaining and deterring asylum seekers. 
In contrast, the UNHCR, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, spends just $3.5 billion on refugees all around the world. Our money should be an effort to go towards protection of refugees around the world, not trying to stop people fleeing persecution. Australia should do more to protect those who are fleeing violence and persecution. Not only is this about protection, protecting people who face these dangers, it is also about restoring our own humanity and keeping our own promises. I know that Australia can do better and I hope that Australia will do better. Today I call upon the Australian Government to keep its promise it made 60 years ago and not return people back to danger. Thank you.